for your leadership, uh, and um, thank you uh, to uh, Chairman Luktemeyer for holding this hearing. And I want to thank all of the witnesses for testifying today on such an important and timely issue. I've seen firsthand the devastating impact of the fentanyl crisis in my district and across the Commonwealth of Kentucky. The most recent uh, drug overdose report from the Kentucky Office of Drug Control Policy uh, uh, reported that uh, there, is a, there was a 14.5% increase in overdose <clears throat> deaths in my home state. And according to cases autopsied by the Kentucky Office of the State Medical Examiner and toxicology reports submitted by Kentucky coroners, the rise in the death toll was driven largely by an increased use in fentanyl, which accounts for approximately 70% of all overdose deaths in my state. In Woodford County, Kentucky, in my district, a county with only 27,000 people, nine individuals have been charged with trafficking fentanyl since 2016, and six of these individuals were charged with death of another individual. We need to not only arrest individuals such as those in Woodford County who traffic this potent deadly drug, but also find and eliminate the source of production and financing. And when I talk to the narcotics officers in Kentucky, they are very unambiguous that, that this fentanyl is coming from our poorest southern border and the original source is China. And the Chinese are co collaborating with the cartels, getting it through the trafficking channels up to Kentucky and killing our people. So let me just start with uh, a question for Mr. Kassar and Mr. Grellner. In my district, Officers who serve in the high-intensity drug trafficking areas, HIDA, are on the front lines fighting against the cartels and their fentanyl trafficking activities. FinCEN at Treasury should be following the money in these areas to expose the relationships between the cartels and the illicit financing, which in turn should lead to, lead to cutting off the funding of illegal fentanyl trafficking. <clears throat> Can you all <clears throat> uh, elaborate a little bit about how FinCEN, in fact, does partner with HIDA? officers to catch money launderers and expose illicit financing activities? And how could <clears throat> FinCEN do a better job providing, uh, and Treasury generally, working with Haida and other narcotics officers to expose these illicit finance channels? <clears throat> Approximately uh, 22 million pieces of financial intelligence are filed every year with Treasury's FinCEN. About uh, four to five million of those pieces of financial intelligence are suspicious activity reports. HIDAs have access to this financial intelligence uh, directly or indirectly through their members. Um, to answer somebody else's question earlier, state and local law enforcement does have access to financial intelligence as well. One of the things that FinCEN, and I, I'm no longer within FinCEN, I used to serve there but no longer, FinCEN occasionally uh, embedded a representative in the Haida task forces. I'm not quite sure if they do now. Um, but uh, by and large, we have intelligence. What we're lacking, again, my opinion, is people to use the financial intelligence to go out in the streets and make cases. OK, so you concur with that, Mr. Groner, based do, on sir. your experience? All, all of you do. And pardon me, because of lack of time, I'm going to I'm going to move to Mr. M on an, on another question because I, I think you've answered that. I see from your biography, Mr. M, that you co-developed the first ever OFAC SDN list sanctioning the California drug cartel in 1995. I have legislation, the Chinese Military and Surveillance Company Sanctions Act, that uses the OFAC SDN list to target the financing of military and surveillance companies that act counter to the national security of the United States. I'm interested to hear your experience and views on using OFAC sanctions um, and, and discuss why the OFAC SDN list was the proper channel to sanction the cartel in 1995 and how this OFAC list could be used to target some of the producers of fentanyl uh, production in China. Yes, uh, thank you for the question. It's most effective when they're most vulnerable. If they have legitimate institutions and businesses that rely upon the legitimate banking systems and so forth, and for trade purposes, and we are able to identify the evidence and information that they are committing illicit activities and crimes. Sanctioning is the most effective way to disable their ability to use the legitimate financial institutions. And the Kali cartel businesses were most effective. Are, are we sanctioning, is OFAC sanctioning Chinese companies that produce the component parts of fentanyl now? Onesies, twosies. They should be doing a much more uh, robust job. We've given them enough 
information and evidence on, on hundreds of these companies. That, that is a critical piece of testimony and a takeaway for this committee um, and also for the Select Committee on China. I appreciate your testimony. I yield back.